Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna make this stylized female character base mesh. A base mesh like this can serve as a great jumping off point for creating new characters without having to recreate the wheel each time. I've put a bunch of blueprints for the base mesh on Dropbox in case you wanted to use them to follow along. I have some general ones of the body like this, as well as some additional ones of individual body parts to further help with your shaping should you need it. Okay, let's jump in. Before we start, I'd just like to mention I do make use of a built-in Blender add-on called Extra Objects. This gives the rounded cube and single vertex options under the Add Mesh menu, which is very helpful in sculpting and modeling in general. I'd highly recommend. I also have Align to View enabled for new objects under the Editing menu which gives a little bit more control when creating new objects. This is just a personal preference of mine. Don't forget to save your preferences after making changes. Okay, let's get started by adding in the reference images. One on the numpad for front view. Shift A and add the front reference image. I'm gonna scale this up by a factor of five. You can click and hold in the top box and then pull down to copy the number to the other axes for a uniform scale. Three on the numpad to go to side view and then add in the side profile reference image of the body. You can hold control while scaling to scale incrementally as you can see up in the top left corner. I will scale until it reaches a factor of five to match the front image. And then adding in the arm, I split these up so you can see the silhouette of the body a little easier and not have it obstructed by the arm. Then I'll rename the images to keep my file somewhat organized. Now I'm just going to move the images out of the way by pressing G and X to move just along the x-axis. I'll do that for both the side profile and arm images. And then for the front image, I'll press G to move. And as you can see, I can move it freely around like this. But when I press Y, it will constrain it just to the Y axis. I'll move it back just a bit. Okay, starting in on the body, let's begin with the head and neck. Shift A, add a rounded cube. I'm going to change the radius to 1 and then the arc divisions to 16 for better control when sculpting. Now 3 on the numpad to go to side view. You can see here the blueprint is a little off, so I'm just going to pull it back a bit to line up with the sphere I have already. With the blueprints lined up, I'm going to go over to the right layer panel now, and I'm going to toggle off the select and render options for the reference images. It's tucked away behind the eyebrows of my super cool logo, but there is a filter up there that you can click on to make these toggles visible here. This will make it so that you can't accidentally select the reference images in the viewport, and also make it so that the images do not appear in the final render. Now I'm going to press Control tab to pull up the mode pie menu and select Sculpt Mode. And then I'm going to select the Elastic Deform Brush and get to forming the general shapes. It should be on by default, but make sure you have the X Symmetry option on up here in the top right. Now I'm going to Control Tab to the Pie menu again and select Object Mode, then press Shift D to duplicate the head object. and then back into sculpt mode with the elastic deform brush to continue shaping what will be the jaw. You can change the size of the brush by pressing F on your keyboard. This will give you different levels of control depending on how big or small the brush is. Seven on the numpad for top view, then shift A, add a rounded cube. I'm gonna use an operator preset called capsule for the neck. It doesn't look too different from this angle, but one on the numpad for front view, and you can see it creates a longer pill shape, which is perfect for what we need. As a quick aside, I do have a free external third-party add-on called machine tools installed. This gives me a slightly different looking pie menu. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can download it. I will tab into edit mode and then press Alt Z to toggle X-ray mode. You can toggle it up here as well with this button. 
Then I'll box select the vertices on the bottom and then S to scale to give the neck a little bit of a sloping shape. Numpad 3 for side view and then R on the keyboard to rotate the neck into place. Shift D to duplicate the head and then pulling into the shape of the torso. Pressing shift while using any brush turns it into the smooth brush, which is a very handy shortcut that I use a lot. You can see here I have the deform brush selected, but I am smoothing here, which allows you to subtly change the shape of your objects. Duplicating the head again here for the hips, and then more elastic deform brush to pull it into the general shape. For the thigh, I'm going to add in another capsule. And then I'm going to turn off sculpting symmetry in the top right corner so I can get the desired shape. You can see when I start to use the deform brush here, the middle part of the capsule doesn't want to react, and that's because there isn't any geometry there. To fix this, I'm going to tab into edit mode and then press Ctrl R and play with the scroll wheel of my mouse to add in some control loops. Now when I go back into sculpt mode, the cylinder is more pliable than before. Shift D in object mode now to create the calf. Moving up to the arms, Shift D on the head in object mode to now create the shoulder. You can press H on your keyboard to hide objects in the viewport for easier viewing. Shift D on the thigh to create the bicep. Shift D on the bicep to create the forearm. Once I have the shape of the legs and arms, I'm going to select all of the different objects at once by holding shift and left mouse button. Over on the right, I'm going to now add a mirror modifier. Now this only adds a mirror modifier to the last object you selected in the group. To have it be added to everything selected, you can press Ctrl L and then select modifiers from the list that pops up. Now this doesn't look right. And that's because the mirror point for each of the objects, as you can see by the little dots here, is not in the middle of the body. To move it to the middle, you can press Ctrl A and then select All Transforms. Now the mirror point, or the object origin point, is in the middle of the body and is working as expected. Okay, so now onto the hand. Shift D to duplicate the shoulder. I'm going to tab into edit mode and select all the vertices to move them. This allows you to retain the mirror to the other side of the body. Moving objects in edit mode, make sure that the mirror point or origin point is not affected. Now it's just more shaping as we've done before to roughly line it up with the blueprint. I'm going to create a capsule for the finger digits. Tabbing into edit mode and pressing Ctrl R to create a control loop, then scaling it up to give it more shape. Shift D to duplicate a couple more instances, and then moving and rotating into the rough shape of a finger. Once you have one finger set, you can Shift D to duplicate for the rest, and then make minor adjustments by rotating, moving, and scaling.
Now I'm going to select the clay strips brush here and then holding control I will invert the brush and dig out the well of the palm. Holding control with any brush inverts it. Another very handy shortcut when sculpting. For the fingers, like we did for the arms and legs, I'll select them all, control A to clear transforms, add a mirror modifier, then control L to add the mirror modifier to all of them. I put a shape of a foot on the blueprint to help with this part. Just trace it out using the single vertex option. Make sure you have the same number of vertices on both sides of the foot. Then select four vertices and press F to create a face. Then switch to edge mode. Select the outer edge here and then you can press F all the way down to automatically create quad faces. Now you can rotate the foot into place, then extrude up like this. Then I tab into edit mode and right click to subdivide the object to get a little more geometry for easier sculpting. For the breasts, just shift D to duplicate the head and some more general shaping. For the ears, I'm going to create a cylinder scale it on the x-axis, then rotate it into place. Then I'll control tab into sculpt mode and shape it up a bit more. Adding a mirror modifier and then control A to clear transforms. Okay, now into the eyes. I'm gonna create a UV sphere this time.
tabbing into edit mode, select the middle vertex and alt shift select the first loop and then press O on your keyboard to activate proportional editing or you can press up here. Then with the scroll wheel on your mouse you can change the area of influence so that when you press G to move your selection the third loop doesn't move. Now you can press X and select delete vertices. Now alt left click the first loop again and then press E, then Y to extrude back along the Y axis, and then F to create a face, then I to inset. Then I'm gonna shade smooth and add a subdivision surface modifier. Then tabbing back into edit mode, alt left click the third loop, press control B to add a bevel. You can play with the offset and segments to get the desired look. Then alt left click the inner loops and press shift R to repeat the last operation you performed, in this case the bevel. Now shift A and add a rounded cube directly in line with the eyeball to create the cornea. You can press S then hold shift to increase the precision of the scale as you move the mouse. Tabbing into edit mode, turn on proportional editing. Pull out this one vertex here and create a subtle football shape for a touch of realism. Then shade smooth and subdivision surface modifier. Now onto the eyelids. Shift A to create another rounded cube. Let's scale it up a bit bigger than the cornea. Tabbing into edit mode, alt left click the middle loop, then X to delete. Turn off proportional editing, then alt left click the loop here, and then press S and then Z to scale along the Z axis. You can hold control to incrementally scale until the scale field up in the top left corner reaches zero. Then repeat for the bottom. Now press F to create a face, I to inset, and then shift R to repeat the inset operation a few times. Then repeat this for the top. Shade Smooth and a Subdivision Surface Modifier. Tabbing into Edit Mode and then pressing L to select all the link vertices on the bottom. I'm then going to press H to hide them. With Proportional Editing on, I'm going to select this edge loop here. And then I'm going to move it up so that the eyelid shape is something like this. Alt plus H to unhide the bottom, and then I'll repeat. Turning off proportional editing, I'm going to move and rotate the eyelids into position.
Now I'm going to select these loops here and pull them in to get a better shape on the eyelids. And then I'm going to add in a little bevel as well with control B. Now let's select all the eye components and move them into place. As we did with the arms and legs, control A and clear transforms, mirror modifier, and then control L. For the nose, shift E to duplicate the head and then just some general shaping. The eyebrows, just a rounded cube capsule pulled roughly to match the shape of the skull. Okay, so at this point you have somewhat of a base mesh already, I suppose. I do like to use the voxel remesh function to increase the resolution of the model a bit so I can add in some details, shift things around, and just generally tighten things up. For a quick overview on how the remesh function works, you can see for the head, tapping into edit mode, we have the default resolution and topology of the head. Now when I go up to the voxel remesher with a voxel size of 0.05, let's say, when I press remesh and tab into edit mode, the head has been remeshed with a more uniform topology and the resolution has increased a little bit. The lower the voxel size number, the higher the resolution. In Blender version 2.9, you can also set the voxel size by pressing shift R while in sculpt mode. Here I'll lower it a bit more to 0.03. You can also use the shortcut control R to perform the remesh function, so you don't always have to go up to the menu each time. Now you can see, tabbing into edit mode, the resolution has increased even more. This will give us more sculpting control and allow us to start adding in subtle details and better shapes. Don't forget to turn on sculpting symmetry if you happen to have it off from before. I want the model to have a little bit more of a stylized, angular look. So to help get this look, you can go up to the mask menu here and select the lasso mask. You can also access this tool by using the shortcut shift, control, and left mouse button. Here I'm going to draw a mask like this to create an angular cut on the side of the head. You can see the black mask here on the model. Now going up to the mask menu again, we can select the mask slice and fill holes option. This will cut the area you have masked and then fill it with geometry. To clear the mask, you can press Alt M or just remesh by pressing Ctrl R again. Now I'll smooth the model a bit, and you can see we have a more angular head shape now. Let's try it again for the front of the head. Shift, Control, Left, Mouse button to draw a cut like this. Then up to the mask menu. If you want to speed things up, you can right-click functions like this, and then select Add to Quick Favorites. To access your Quick Favorites, just press Q, and you'll see whatever you've added in there in the past. In this case, I have mask slice and fill holes already added. So I select that from the menu, and then I press Control R to remove the mask and remesh at the same time. And then I use the smooth brush to finalize. Now I just go through the whole model doing these same steps. Control tab into sculpt mode, shift R to set the remesh size to something like 0.03 in this case. Control R to perform the remesh and then some combination of smoothing, lasso mask, and mask slice to tighten up the forms and add in some subtle details. Here I'm squaring off the jaw a little bit more to make it more stylized.
For the ear, remeshing to 0.03 and then using the sculpt draw brush and holding control to invert it and digging out the ear canal. Watch out for the back of the ear here because if you dig too much it can create weird artifacts on the backside. Once I have dug it out a little bit I press Control R again to remesh again and clean up the object's topology then more smoothing and shaping. I put some blueprints for individual body parts where I thought it might be more helpful in this shaping stage. Here I'm adding the blueprints for the torso then shift selecting them and then forward slash to go to local view. Now I just do the same steps as for the head and jaw to use the mask slice for a more angular look. Then it's just more smoothing and shaping from here on out. I don't do too much here as I still want to keep the model generic. For an area like the hand, for example, you can press Alt-B to set the view region for easier orbiting if other stuff starts getting in the way. Pressing Alt-B again will return you back to the normal view. For the nose, I like to use the sculpt draw brush and hold control to invert it to dig out the nostrils, much like we did for the ear. And then for the final step, I like to angle the arms a little bit so that there is a subtle bend in the elbow. This makes the model a little bit better set up for a rig should you want to animate or pose at a later point. You may want to raise the arms a little more than I have here for a more traditional A pose as well. Up to you. So there you have it. One way to make a stylized female base mesh. To keep the length of this video down, I did make some more adjustments all over the model off camera, if you will, to end up with something like this, which is what you see in the Dropbox blueprints. In the next video, I'm going to go over joining everything together, smoothing it, and adding in details like lips and musculature. Give me a shout on social media and show me your stuff. I love seeing it. I have a little Facebook group going now too, which makes sharing a little bit easier if you'd like. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I hope it helped, and see you in the next one.